I saw a Wall Street Journal opinion uh, piece uh, about the population bomb. Are you, you guys are familiar with the population bomb, I'm sure. Uh, it was a very influential book about how- um, Not for Erica and not for me. <laughs> <laughs> didn't influence people on this podcast. I went the uh, other direction. <laughs> most people are familiar with. Uh, basically saying, stop having kids. It's bad for the environment. It's bad for the world. And so someone wrote in, I was a college student when I read Mr. Ehrlich's The Population Bomb. I took it to heart and now have no grandchildren. But 50 years later, the population has increased to 8 billion without dire consequences. I was gullible and stupid. Kenneth M. Woodbury, Minnesota. That's so sad. That breaks my heart. Because it just, it just, the way it was written just hits a certain heartstring. It definitely hit with me. And I was just thinking about how much joy has come into my life since even having one kid could not even imagine, you know, looking down the road and have seen the joy of like grandkids. Like that's even so far down the horizon. But um, a very real consequence of a philosophy that tells people that humans are evil and the problem and you should limit them as much as possible. Um, this is a very real result of that philosophy. You said you hate to end on a negative note. Let's end with a high note because there was the whole bet. Did you ever hear about this? That there was a bet between economist Julian Simon and Paul Ehrlich. And this was done in 1980. It was a scientific wager because Paul Ehrlich's like his whole thesis of the population bomb is that everything is going to be, resources are going to become increasingly scarce and ex super expensive. And we're all going to starve to death because there's too many people and everyone's going to die. And the price of everything, like oil and everything's going to shoot through the roof. And Julian Simon was like, um, you want to bet? So they had this $10,000 bet. It was started in September 29, 1980. And, Paul, and Julian Simon said to Paul, pick five commodities that are not government controlled or you know, run something like that. Just pick five that are truly market-based. And if they get more expensive after these 10 years, you win the bet. Because then you're right that resources are becoming more scarce, where we're going to run out of stuff and we're not going to have any things. And so Paul Paul Ehrlich bets, you know, he's like, okay, he picked five commodities. And 10 years later, 1990, burr, 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 how many of those five commodities were more expensive? I hate it when I'm right. That's right. Zero. For the audio podcast listeners, <laughs> that's a big fat zebra. <laughs> So he won. Julius Simon won. You know, somehow, I told you so, just doesn't quite say it. He took it right to his face, like on this bet. And Paul Ehrlich, did he turn around and go, gee, maybe I was wrong. You know, I, he picked chromium, copper, nickel, tin, and tungsten. All of them were cheaper did he pay up? 10 years later. He did. Mm, well, well, good going. But he also for continued up. to push the anti anti life, anti population uh, uh, shtick for his whole life. Julian Simon Dang would have been perfectly happy, like keep the money if you just reject your book. That would have been <laughs> exactly. Worth it. Even just from an observation standpoint, seeing people that believe in the human capacity for innovation, like Elon Musk, and he's put this so well. Like, there's people that are anti civilization. Like people that are telling you to stop having kids are anti civilization. So that's like the the simplest, most well, just, way of looking again, at it. Again, what you're saying about the population about and not having grandkids, Tom, I think that was a great thing to have brought up. And I guess it's important to remember that the central thesis of that book is wrong and that Julian Simon's central thesis is right, that the ultimate resource is human ingenuity and humans. We are a resource not just an additional mouth to feed. And that's the biggest thing that we need to confront when it comes to these climate people, when it comes to the population bomb stuff. They just look at humans as resource eaters and consum consumers. And, you know, all we are is consumption. In fact, we're not. We're very productive. Humans are a, a, the ultimate resource. You want more humans and you'll get a cleaner planet and a better world.